also would have. <clears throat> Pillar Tosma states on this news list. Welcome to the 19th meeting of Mecca KSA Tosma Test Club. Club number 0787-9933. Area 6, Division B, District 79. I am Anand Pillai, the Sergeant at Arms for today's meeting. Before we begin, let me read out the mission of our Toastmasters Club. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. I request all of you to repeat after me. For better listening, for better, for better listening, listening, for better listening, better thinking, Better, better thinking, thinking, better thinking, and better speaking, and better, better speaking. speaking. We learn by doing. We learn, we by, learn doing. by doing. Thank you. I request you all to silence your phones during the meeting. Since we are in an online meeting, members other than role players, meeting leaders, and speakers are advised to mute their microphones during the meeting. You are urged to upload, upload your use using the emojis throughout your videos. As a general rule, Toastmasters encourages all speakers and role players to speak on any topic except politics, religion, and sex. I hope you'll enjoy today's meeting as I will. Let me now hand over control of the meeting to our acting presiding officer, our rising star of our club, Toastmaster Mudasir Farooq. Thank you, Sergeant at Arms Anand Pillai for that introduction. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, Area B Director, distinguished Toastmasters, a very good morning to all of you. It is a bright and a sunny morning here in Jeddah. This is where I'm residing. And it is definitely hot. But the energy that you have of getting up in early hours and doing, conducting these sessions is matched to none. Our session today is the 19th club meeting that we're having. And I would like to thank all the members and all the support that we are receiving from our sponsors, our uh, mentor, DTM Sundar, and definitely the Area B team, which has been supporting us in order to have successful meetings. Before we go further, I would like to call Toastmaster Nandu Kumar, who is our Area B area director, uh, to please just give us a few words Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Mudasir, for inviting me to this club today. This is my pleasure to attend uh, this meeting today, and I'm really, very really happy you already achieved the two DCP goals by adding 11 members in this program here. Thank you very much, all the XCOM. And uh, I request all of you, I, I know a lot of people uh, in this club already completed their level one, but in the PMI, they updated only one. So I request all of you to update your credentials into the TMI and we need to complete our distinguished uh, status, five DCP points by next month. I, I'm, I'm sure you can do it, only you have to update your, uh, because I saw a lot of uh, people are doing the level three, L3. So I request all of you to update into the TMI and continue the same momentum. Do not uh, cancel any meeting and the success all, always with you. Thank you over to you, Toastmaster Udas. Uh, sorry, to thank, you. thank you, Area 6 Director Toastmaster Nandu. Uh, yesterday, in fact, I sat with DTM Shridhar and we have updated all the education awards up to date. It has all been updated in the Club Central and hopefully uh, we might be seeing a few more DCP points coming up in the next update in the TMI dashboard. Thank you very much for the... Thank you. Thank you, DTM Sundar, for the update. Thank you. Uh, DTM Sundar, I received a mail yesterday from uh, TMI that I've completed level one. Uh, yes, sir. That is because we updated yeah. the system for all members. It has been updated. We'll all receive an email. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Let us now proceed with the meeting. Thank you, thank you Area Director, for those words of encouragement and definitely we'll be looking into achieving 
uh, more distinguished points in order to be a distinguished club going forward. Uh, first, I would like to call the word master of the day, Toastmaster Hidayatullah, if you can give us the word of the day. Presiding officer, fellow Toastmasters and guests, for today's meeting, the word of the day is paradigm shift, which means a fundamental change in approach or underlying assumption. As an example, the statement, Geophysical evidence supporting Wegner's theory led to a rapid paradigm shift in the discipline of earth sciences. Each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day. I will give a word of the day report when called upon during the meeting. Uh, thank you, presiding officer of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Hadatullah, for the word of the day. Paradigm shift. Let this meeting be a paradigm shift in over life. Let us change for the better, for betterment of the world and for betterment of ourselves. The theme of the day today is comfort and success do not go together. And it is an experience and everyone would stand behind the statement that yes, comfort and success are two opposite directions of the boat. If you're comfortable, you might achieve little success, but if you leave your comfort zone and you challenge yourself, you definitely you will be achieving success far beyond what you have imagined or what the goals have you set. Now, I would like to hand over the lectern to another vibrant rising star of Mecca. Um, point of information, uh, Toastmaster Mudassar, uh, can we introduce our guests, please? Oh, please, yes. Uh, we so have our guests. The, announce the winners for last week's meetings. Um, okay, uh, announced the winning announcement was done by the Toastmaster, but okay, I will announce it. <clears throat> uh, just give me one minute. I can do that. First, you... uh, it's okay, I have the list and you can do it. First, I would like to welcome our guests today. Uh, we have Toastmaster Vasca who is joining us uh, for the first time. Toastmaster Vasca, could you give us? your kind words to start off the day. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mudis, sir. Hello, everybody. Uh, my full name is Bhaskar Ilangovan. I'm in Riyadh for 11 years. Uh, I'm from Bangalore, India. And uh, my work domain is reinsurance in Taunia. Taunia is a insurance, leading insurance company in uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, hobbies are cricket, movies, and... Uh, it's great to be here and I've been uh, planning for a long time. Uh, so as to use the word paradigm shift, this is a paradigm shift for my regular routine. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to be part of this uh, uh, meetings and programs. Uh, uh, basically, I'm, I'm interested to improve my communication and uh, uh, presentation skills and when I inquired with my friends and I discussed with one of my fellow friends, Naresh, uh, who is part of the Tamil Toast Club. So he referred me to this club and uh, indeed I'm looking forward and thank, thanks for adding me and welcoming me here. Thank you and welcome Vasco once again to our meeting. Uh, we have a thank weekly you. meeting on Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. You're always more than welcome to join us. Uh, definitely it is a paradigm shift if you're getting up so early in order to pursue what you have set out to. Uh, for our previous yes. week winners, uh, the best speaker was Toastmaster Daniel. Uh, the table topic, best table topic speaker was DTM Sidhidev. Best evaluator was PM Sunny Korevela. Best meeting leader was Toastmaster Muhammad Noman. And the best of big three was your truly Toastmaster Mudassar Faru. A round of applause for all the winners and let us wish them all the best for the coming days as well. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce another rising star of Mecca KSA, Toastmasters Club, person who is working in Bahrain in the finance sector. Uh, he is a member of two professional accounting bodies. He is a uh, doing things. He is a, a paradigm shift, I would say, 
for me to achieve what I have achieved till date, and hopefully he will be a source of inspiration for me going forward as well. Please join me in welcoming our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Anand Pillai, to the virtual stage. Toastmaster Anand Pillai, the stage is all yours. Thank you for setting off Mr. Toastmaster Mudasi for that overwhelming introduction. I'm really happy to take, take up this role for the first time in Toastmastering. And, and uh, as, as he said, it's a paradigm shift. I mean, we are all here to grow in the ladder, right? And uh, I feel that it's quite, you know, for me, um, it, it didn't take much time. Uh, Definitely, I was part of most of the meetings when I was, uh, when, when I was here in Bahrain. Um, anyways, before we start, I would like to take this opportunity because two important things happened in the, in the past week. So I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate on behalf of our, our club, our, our presiding officer, our club president, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Sridhar has achieved uh, the World Class uh, Speaking Coach Award from the Great Valentine. So I would like to congratulate him on this occasion. Second is that our mentor, uh, Toastmaster Sundar, has achieved the highest distinguishing award. Let's call it the Distinguished Toastmasters. He has achieved this position the last week. So on behalf of the club, I would like to congratulate and extend our hands on his achievement. A round of applause begin. Thank you. Well, the theme of the day is comfort and success do not go together, of course. In any path of life, in any endeavors, there should be some sort of, you know, pain that we need to take up in order to be successful. In my personal example, I have shared it before also. This is, this should be, I mean, this is the case like many of us sitting here, they have something to say that about pain and gain, right? So if I talk about my qualifications when, during the time when I'm working, when I'm reaching at home, it's almost 7, 7.30, then playing with the kids and being with the family. And, you know, I, I, I'm not able to study at this time. So I make sure that everyone is slept almost at 9, 30, 10. Then I start my studies at 10 o'clock. Then I stop my studies at about 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock based on my capacity at that time. So it depends. I mean, this is, uh, from my life, I have a classical example of this. I mean, many of us are having the same sort of examples. So it is a, it's very clear that unless we are ready to give up something, unless we are ready to take some pain or leave the comfort chair, we won't be able to achieve anything in the mind. Everything in this world created out of discomforts and pain. So be prepared for that. Once we have something to achieve in our life, we have to be prepared for this. The meeting, um, the next in this session, I would like to introduce our meeting leaders. Do we have a counter percent here? Uh, no, Anand, we do not have a counter available. But if you want, I can take up this role. Uh, all right, if you don't have that, I think it's not an issue. So I would like to call our word master and the grammarian, Toastmaster Hidayatullah Beg. Toastmaster Hidayatullah, can you explain your role? Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Toastmaster uh, Anand Pillai, uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers, listening carefully to their language usage. I'll take note of any misuses in the English language, as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings or thoughts. I will grieve the grammatical usage report when called upon during the meeting. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Hidayatullah. Next in line is our timer. 
uh, did we decide the timer? Those, those master yes, it's Toastmaster yeah. Noman will take care of the role. Right. So I would like to welcome Toastmaster Noman to the stage to explain his role. Toastmaster Noman. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. <clears throat> Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and respected guests. My role as a timer is to keep time for all the prepared speeches, table topic speeches, and evaluation speeches. For this purpose, I will use three colors, green, yellow, and red. The green color will indicate that the speaker hit the qualifying time. Yellow color means the speaker hit target time. It's a halfway between minimum and maximum time and red color when the allotted time is finished. No, after the red color appears on the screen, each speaker has 30 seconds to wrap up his speech. No, for the ideal length for the prepared speeches is five to seven minutes, where green will be shown at five, yellow at six, and red at the seven. For table topic, we have one minute at green, yellow at the one and a half minute, and red at two minutes. For evaluation, the ideal time is two minutes for green, yellow at two and a half minute and red at three. Now for table topic evaluation, we have 30 <laughs> seconds for one table topic speech evaluation. Like if we have six speakers, the green will be at three, yellow at three and a half and red at four. I will present my report when called about by the general evaluator. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Norman, for explaining your role. Now, we have been talking about pain and gain, or let's say it, comfort and success do not go together. See, we have seen, uh, I would like to again emphasize this to our guests as well. Toastmasters, it's a wonderful platform where, you know, its leaders are made. It's, the, it's not only that, I mean, I can say from my experience itself that I was quite confident in speaking in, uh, in meetings or with people around me. But when it comes to a, a group of people and addressing a group of people, it was really tough for me. I mean, I got anxious, nervous, and, getting the content out of the brain was so difficult, you know, because of the nervousness was basically hacking your brain. So it will lead to a blank. Although you have contents in your brain, you cannot reach it out when you want to. This is the wonderful platform where you can speak, you are free to speak anything as per the Toastmasters guidelines So and develop day by day. And the what most important thing is that increasing the stage time and getting as much as out of the Toastmaster. Not uh, delaying it anymore. But the next in the session is the most important session is the prepared speeches. We have lined up two prepared speeches for the day. We have Toastmaster Mohammed Noman and we have Toastmaster Mudasir uh, ready with their speeches. Before that, I would like to call their evaluators on stage to explain the objective and criteria of these speeches. For this purpose, I would like to call Toastmaster Hassan Hussain to explain the role, to explain the criteria for Toastmaster Mohammed Noman's speech. Toastmaster Hassan Hussain. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good morning to all fellow Toastmasters. Please excuse me for my video for a while. Uh, the purpose of my speaker's project is for him to identify his or her own cultural identities and the stereotypes that impact other perception of him or her. The member will deliver a well-organized speech. Member will share some aspect of his or her cultural identity and the stereotypes that impact others' perception of him or her. The speech may be humorous, informative, or any style the member chooses. The speech should not be a report on the content of the cross-cultural understanding project. The speech length, it is five to seven minutes. The speech title, it is Make Earth a Better Place. 
a speech title, Make Earth a Better Place. Over to you, Toastmaster Bidri. Thank you, Toastmaster Hassan Hussain. Our speaker, Toastmaster Mohammad Noman. He is from the city of Lailapur, Pakistan. He is a qualified accountant from ACMA and CGMA, which is the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. And he, has, he also holds an MBA with specialization in management and finance. He has more than 15 years of experience in Saudi Arabia since 2013. He's currently working as a deputy manager accounting and finance in PMID LLC. Mr. Uh, Toastmaster Mohammed Noman, the, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes. You're yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. No, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences, according by Audrey Lord. Good morning, Subah al Khair, Bonjour, Toastmaster of the Day, respected guests, and fellow Toastmasters. Today, I will just try to discuss about the cross cultural understanding. No, what is cross cultural understanding? It simply refers to the basic ability of people to recognize, interpret, and correctly react to the people in these senses and situations that are open to misunderstanding due to cultural differences. These differences are mainly due to context and the method of conversation. Now, if we just check the context, we can just divide the whole world in two kinds of categories, either a low context country and a high context country. Low context country like USA and Australia, in these countries, the communication should be clear and accurate just to avoid any misunderstanding. Now, on the other hand, if I just talk about the high context countries, this should be like Japan and Korea. In these countries, the communication should be more conceptual. It should be more subtle and complicated. And we should require to read between the line to understand the full message. No, no one country in the world is 100% low or high context. The communications are ranging from the high to the low context. To communicate and work best in these cultures, we should balance between the listening and speaking. When we are working with a highly conceptual culture, our focus should be on the purpose of communication and not on the spoken words. We should be aware of any body movement and any body change. While on the other hand, in low context country, speaking should be, we should be specific as much as possible. And sometimes we should need time to express our mind clearly. Now, when we are dealing in many culture at a time, the best approach is to use the low context method. Now, if we just, as long as the context, we just move the other point, that is the method of conversation. We can just divide on the method of conversation, the entire word in two categories. One is the Russia like direct culture. In these cultures, they are very open and clear in giving their feedback and criticism. Often they use the words like totally and strictly like, totally disagree with you. Similarly, they didn't feel any embarrassment in giving criticism, either in public or at a group level. Now, on the other hand, if I just talk about the indirect culture like Japan, they make the polite criticism. They try to mix the negative messages with the positive one, like we can get our Toastmasters, like the sandwich approach. No, normally they use the words like such as maybe or rather in this message. Like I just give you an example. Maybe you should review your opinion. No, if we just tell them <clears throat> the method of conversation in order to deal with the different cultures, we should know that the method of expressing differences in the point of view. 
Now, at this point, I just want to share my own personal experience. I got an opportunity to work with the Riyadh Metro project. In that project, we have staff or more than 8,000 personals are working in that project. They are from 38 different countries and they spoke 22 different languages to communicate and to complete the work done. Only in accounts, finance and controlling department, we have working 10 nationalities with us. They are from Pakistan, India, Jordan, Lebanon, Philippines, South Korea, Netherlands, Belgium, Spain and Saudi Arabia. So despite that all of these dispersed nationalities are working in one department, it is one of the best team I work with. What is possible? Can anyone answer? It's only quite simple. It's only because of the context and the method of communication we use between us to work in the best place. And we just try to achieve our best goals. Similarly, I will just try to give an other example of Google. Sometimes it's just to define that sometimes the company culture will be more as compared to the local context or local culture. The Google believe in self improvement of a person. They will just put more and more focus on the good things. No, when we just evaluate at the year end, they just provide the positive and only positive feedback. Can you imagine there is no negative feedback in the whole evaluation sheet? No, when the Google moved to the France, they were very upset when they just, a manager who's working in the Google, he said, when I just first time I saw the evaluation form, I just read this form 10 times just to evaluate where I can find something bad that my staff did and I will highlight that. Because if we just talk about the France, they will just have more focus on the negative points just to improve them in the future. But Google have the entirely different opinion. Now in this company category, they have a more focus on the personal growth. And if we just talk about, they have more dominating as compared to the local market because it's a big giant. So they said over the period of five years, all the French people who are working in the, you can just say Google France, they're just giving the negative feedback in a very polite and smooth manners. So you can just say, they're just giving the un-French manner type of evaluation in Google. No, it is so funny. We are born in different cultures. We are born from different cities, but still we can connect. <clears throat> so I wonder where we are getting grown to make this world a better place. We divide the world on the basis of territories. That's we are created. We just divide on the basis of boundaries created by us. No, what we can do, in my opinion, I think when we just try to judge any person in future. We just remove the cultural glasses to see that the humanity side. This is how I believe that we can just make this world a better place and go a global civilization. Now, if I just talk about the cultural teams that's from the diverse cultures and the non-diverse cultures, according to our research, a team with a diverse cultures background perform 35% better as compared to the non-diverse team. Only thing is the team should be work in the right direction. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Norman. We all know that cross-cultural differences, especially it is very important in the Middle East where we can see people across the world are working together. And the communication in cross-cultural environment is quite challenging. As he said, as he explained, that how they basically say no to certain situations. Strictly, they can say very strictly, or they can say basically using some positive, they can take the help of some positive words to say what they have to say. So it's a matter of basically getting um, aligning the culture within an organization or within a platform to get the maximum out of it. Thank you, Norman, for uh, giving us this wonderful lecture. And I would like to go to the next speaker, Postmaster Mudassir Farooq. 
And for this purpose, I would like to call his evaluator, Toastmaster Jijo Koshi, for explaining the criteria and objective of his book. Toastmaster Jijo Koshi. Thank you, Toastmaster Anand Pillai, for the opportunity. Uh, the member is doing a project from his L3P1. The purpose statement. The purpose of the project is for the member to learn about different types of negotiation and the strategies that can be used while negotiating. And um, time is five to seven minutes. Uh, the purpose of the speech is for the member to share some aspect of the past or future negotiation in his or her life. Speech title, we need to agree. We need to agree. Back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Jijia Koshi. Now, our next speaker, Mudasir Faru, our VP Education, he has already risen his horizons, has become, has taken a lot of roles within the club. And if I would like to introduce him, he is uh, working as a finance manager in a food manufacturing company in, in, uh, in Saudi. He's a member of ACCA and CAA and have been residing in the kingdom for the last 36 years. He has joined Toastmaster to improve his leadership and communication skills. He enjoys playing football and cricket. Toastmaster Mudasir, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, for that generous uh, introduction. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, president, Distinguished Toastmasters, a very good morning to all of you. Negotiation. This word, it's, it's a common word that we use. And I believe that we are always in a constant phase of negotiation, either with ourselves or with someone else. Because it is this negotiation that helps you to understand someone's viewpoint. Uh, it also helps you to deliver what you want. Now, if I would choose uh, Toastmaster um, Muhammad Hassan, what does the word negotiation bring to you? Like when I say negotiation, what does what what comes into your mind? Negotiation means to come on a, some point where you have a win-win situation for both of you, where you are in the midway of agreement and uh, getting your uh, requirement done. That is what we negotiate for. Thank you, Toastmaster Hassan, for that definition. Yes, definitely, it is one way of looking at negotiation. Uh, Oxford Dictionary defines negotiation as discussion re as a discussion designed to reach an agreement, or uh, it is something that you do in order to transfer the legal ownership of something that you own to someone else. We must always, uh, we all must have heard the story of the two wolves that are fighting within us. One is the evil wolf that defines what is jealousy, sorrow, regret, self-pity, guilt, inferiority. And the other one is the good wolf which defines what peace, love, hope, humility, serenity, generosity, truth, commission, and etc. These are the two wolves which we are also negotiating on a daily basis within ourselves. I would like to quote an example of the recent negotiation that I had to do, and this was related to selling of my car. Now, in order to sell my car, I had to do some research to find out what is the market value of the car. Then I had to identify what is my minimum amount that I can accept. And then when the buyers approached me, we had some to and fro discussions. Although I did not get the amount I was requesting, uh, but he also had to pay more than what he initially requested. So... Usually when we think about negotiation, we just think that it is something which is done involuntarily or we just go ahead and do it. But if you just sit down and understand the mechanism, which also Toastmasters International 
as mentioned in this project, in the study material, you will find that there are some steps which each one of us as individuals do take in order to achieve our goals or objectives of what we want from our negotiation. Whenever we start negotiation, we first of all determine what is, what do we want from it. We set up the goal, the objective. Uh, then we have this ideal outcome in our mind that this is the purpose of my negotiation of what I'm going to want from this one. Then we identify the different ways of doing communication with the other party. Then we have our baseline or what we are willing to sacrifice in order to achieve our goal. And then we have the dead, the end where what we are not going to negotiate, that's something which is non-negotiable. So in my case, I had to do the research for the market value. Uh, my ideal outcome was to sell the car at a specific price. The way of communication was that I had to put an ad online. I requested my friends, I told my family members. And what I was willing to sacrifice was the use of my vehicle in order to get some money for some other needs that I had. Now, negotiation styles, as you can see from this example that I've given you, that I was quite accommodating in the way that I was willing to listen to them and I also agreed to reduce my price in order to meet a midpoint somewhere where he was also comfortable and I was also comfortable in making this exchange. Other than accommodating, Style. You have you can be a competitive negotiator where you want where you're someone who wants a quick quick uh, solution or you want a quick agreement. Uh, these are the people who are who have a clear defined that these are the winners and these are the not what we are going to do it. As an example can be you can go to someone and tell them listen I want this if you want to give it to me yes if not no there is no we are not going to negotiate on this subject matter. And you give them your offer and that's it. Then you have those compromising people who are willing to compromise, who are willing to give concession to one another in order to find a solution. These are the people who value relationships, who want to mend the relationships or who want the relationship to continue beyond uh, this compromising or this negotiating phase. Example can be our marriages. If you're married, you can say we do compromise on many things in order to achieve other things. Then you can have collaborative style where you brainstorm, both parties sit down and they brainstorm on a solution to see uh, what needs to be done. This is also helpful in maintaining positive relationship, but this is time consuming. Now, the outcomes from negotiations can be three types. You can have a win-win situation, you can have a win-lose situation, or you can have a lose-lose situation, which I would say is a compromise. In win-win situation, everyone gets what they want. Win lose is one party is foregoing and the other party is uh, gaining. In compromise, both parties are losing something in order to find a midway solution. But the important thing in all of this is that you must know when to walk away. That is the important thing. If you understand that this negotiation or this uh, discussion that we are having is going to cause us harm, it's better to walk away. Now. The example I gave in the starting for the two wolves, these are the two wolves which everyone has in their life. You all, sometimes you feel jealous of someone, you want to lie, you want to cheat, you want to progress, you want to do something wrong. But on the other hand, you have this humility in you that, oh, no, I need to be humble, I need to be truthful, I need to use the right way. These are also negotiations that are happening in your stuff. I would request all of you that please feed your good work, feed your humility part. Always be the better person in the room. Always give a better judgment. Let us all agree to disagree and make this world a better place to live. Thank you and back to you Toastmaster of the day. Thank you Toastmaster, Toastmaster Mudasi for that wonderful explanation of what is negotiation. We all know about negotiation. But the most important thing that I learned or I, I liked from his speech is that he mentioned that we are always in a state of negotiation. Absolutely, we are always in a state of negotiation. It is mostly between, I mean, between me and me, I mean, between us. 
we always look at what is the next action to be taken. So we are in a negotiation with that situation, whether to go or not to that situation or whether to do it or not. It's a negotiation, right? It is, it can be either with a person or it, either with a situation or whatever it comes, but we, we are always in a state of negotiation. So, and he was explaining how to basically uh, create a, a win-win situation and what are the outcomes of uh, negotiation. So, it's a, again, it's a state of mind. If a lose-to-lose -lose situation means both of them are feeling lost, means it is their state of mind that they lost. Right? Thank you very much, Cosmos uh, and Norman, for that. And um, timer, have all the all of them qualified for this voting? Yes, both speakers are qualified. All right. Uh, so I request the members to start uh, voting for the best speaker, prepared speech. Uh, meantime, we will go to our next the very interesting session of our uh, Toastmasters, which is the table topic. And table topic is, uh, is called as the prompt to speech. Now, the, the most important thing is that, you know, it doesn't give us much time to think about. It gives us maybe less than two to three seconds or four seconds. And, you know, this is creating a pressure in us. This is creating a pressure where we need to start talking out of nowhere, right? The subject that we are randomly selected subjects. So these subjects may have some experience in our life, may not have some experience. So certain people I used to hear that I have not done that or I don't have that experience. But we need to fabricate something. The fabrication is required to for you to basically, it's not that you are telling some something wrong or something like but you can, if you don't have that experience, you can say some experience from the environment and fill up the time. So we have a time of one to two minutes and we can wrap it up before two minutes, 30 seconds. So I request all of you to use the maximum time. Do not just stop it at last meeting. Also, we have noticed people stop at one minute, one and a half minutes. So this is the time. E even if during the speech, you have to pause a bit, it's, that's fine. Let us pause it. And then suddenly you gear up and speak. But it's always important that if we use the time at least two minutes and then come up with something very interesting out of your own experience or something gathered from the environment. Well, for conducting this session, I would like to call uh, Toastmaster Sanat Kumar for conducting uh, the Table Topics Master. Toastmaster Sanat, the, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good morning, uh, presiding officer, Toastmaster of the day, distinguished Toastmasters, fellow Toastmaster, and guests. Paradigm shift is the theme of the day, or, or the word of the day. And I want to quote one example, which I I very, it's very close to my heart. You know, in earlier times, they used to say all revolutions have to be a violent revolutions. If you want change, if you want to change regimes, if you want to have uh, change a ruler, you need to have a violent revolutions, bloodshed. Then one gentleman appeared on the scene by the name of Mahatma Gandhi. And he said, no, it is not required. We can change things by nonviolent means. He introduced the concept of nonviolence, non-cooperation, boycott. And he proved to the world that a lot can be achieved by nonviolent methods. This, in my opinion, was a paradigm shift in how the world operates or the politics of the world operates. So 
for my next speaker i want to invite him to give one example of paradigm shift that he has observed and speak about the same or his views on the same for this may i invite toastmaster jijo kosi toastmaster jijo kosi yes can you just repeat the topic this is a lot yeah so i said can you give us one example of a paradigm shift that you have observed and speak about the same your views on that how how that has changed the world or changed your life whatever mask mask yourself jijo where are you going hello to masters and distinguished guests a warm good morning to all don't you feel this mask is a real burden on you i felt this is a headache for me to carry this mask everywhere i go everywhere i go to speak and it went and speak now the day is coming we are all been waiting for this day it's tomorrow october 17 the mask i was so glad to hear that news indeed this moment a real paradigm shift for me because uh, yes we know corona is not finished it's just a matter of time it will always come back we need to be alert we need to be cautious to go in public places and still use the mask but it has taught us many hard lessons and it has made i i always stay i always took this period of corona in a positive way help me finish one path in those masters i could reach multiple clubs and member of three clubs at, at that point at this point i cannot do it so that was a real uh, i changed my settings to suit the environment so very big change for me but i acted accordingly to leave out my comfort zone and go with the tide and that's really helping me i urge you all to go with the tide go out of your comfort zone gain the maximum and that's the shift that changed me back to you thank you toastmaster jijo kosi what a wonderful way of talking about paradigm shift indeed covid 19 is a paradigm shift and all all things that came or came along with it or are going to go with it are are indeed have have uh, change our lives in so many ways positive and negative let us cherish the positive and do away with the negative and and carry on with our lives so for my next topic is when you change the way you look at things the things act you look at change i am putting the topic on the chat when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change can i have toastmaster rupesh kumar to speak on this topic uh, good morning 
and uh, uh, and thank you uh, toast uh, toast master uh, for the table topic uh, san tagrawal and all the respective colleagues so regarding uh, this uh, uh, how i looks at the change of course any change uh, is like uh, observing paradigm shift so if i look uh, the journey of last uh, 15 years uh, i i have found uh, at time to time there is a major paradigm shift has happened in uh, in uh, human uh, society for example if you look 15 year back how we used to connect with the people uh, it was more uh, physically uh, through social gathering but uh, through technology uh, if you observe so we have come a long way now either it is uh, social life either it is uh, our working life if you see the role of social media how how it has affected us for the chain now always we ask this question ah uh, uh, why you are, why you are spending so much time on social media so if we uh, talk either whatsapp facebook so there are pro and cons uh, benefit is this this chain has helped us uh, to communicate with people and get connected with the far off friends very easily and in a smooth manner but at the same time uh, what is happening we are finding sometime we are losing opportunity to connect with the people uh by physically meeting them and participating in their uh, social uh, gathering same way if we come to our uh, business and working life we see technology how it has helped if we go 15 year back or 20 year back if you see any accounting package all will silo but now we are using erp and that is helping us to connect uh, with the different department and function a uh, very uh, a smooth manner and dependency on finance or other function uh, on finance has come down because we have been able to uh, go near to the business so this is how i look the change sometime some changes are for good and i think uh, we always have to uh, get the good things uh, identify and uh, uh, we should make best uh, use of this and this uh, this is and this paradigm is is a uh, only uh, uh, truth or fact that is going to remain with us uh, thank you and hand over to uh, master sanat kumar wonderful uh, toast master rupesh kumar uh, yeah things are a constant change and we have to keep up with those changes now the third topic is success is a journey not a destination so you can never you can never get comfortable you have to keep striving to kind of achieve more and more and more so success is a journey not a destination can i invite toastmaster baskar uh, for this topic i am putting the chat uh, topic on the chat toastmaster baskar hello hello to sanskar sanat um good morning yeah very good morning good morning everybody success is a journey and not a destination yes um uh, when i was in college and school days i thought success is something like to just to find a job and a eight hours job and have a bike of your own and okay you are successful in life and then when when is when really when there was a day i started the job then i thought okay success means okay you have to reach the hierarchies of the corporate and then and then came the social uh, family life so it was a sh- shift as we grow like uh, success i could uh, even now i cannot define what is success what would be success for me if i achieve something so it's i'm still uh, personally and as uh career wise and also personal life i can see that the journey is continuing and uh, uh, i'm achieving many milestones but still the destination is not <laughs> near uh, near so uh, otherwise yeah success like uh, we can say that okay we can uh, taste a success in any Uh, it could be in, in uh, as in our career or through sports once we taste the uh, sweet of it or when we come up 
when we beat somebody like for example in sports okay in cricket you score more runs okay you can say that okay i had a success but that would be just for that day whereas uh, uh there is always scope for improvement and uh, yeah thank you thank you mr sam thank you toastmaster baskar hopefully very very yeah. well said yes uh, life life is a series of goals and you achieve one goal that's a success and then you move on to the next and to the next and to the next it it is it it's a continuous ongoing journey you don't you can't stop you don't stop so growth and comfort do not coexist that's the fourth topic of the day i am putting into on the chat growth and comfort do not coexist and to speak on this topic may i invite uh, toastmaster mate hashmi sorry am i pronouncing your name correctly uh, yes sir uh, please can you repeat the uh, uh, topic again sorry the topic is growth and comfort do not coexist i have also put the topic on the chat growth and comfort do not coexist okay sir uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me this topic uh, as we have uh, learned from our experience uh, in life uh, we will uh, realize that uh, we life is a continuous the name of the continuous struggle so where you have to perform extra ordinary you have to leave your comfort zone so like every month life when you pick any target to achieve something to uh, to grow up in the ladder so you have to fix the time frame you have to pick your objectives and you have to fix uh, the daily your your schedule to uh, to Uh, make the effort to achieve that goal so you will have to uh, sacrifice many things in your life your maybe you sometimes your family life maybe you will not be able to give time to your parents and family but your main objective is before your eyes and to continuously make a struggle to achieve that uh, objective and uh, goal and so this is for the whole people that for uh, to uh, achieve certain objective they they set set their target and uh, they leave their comfort zone to go in life okay thank you thank you postmaster mathi hasmi yes you have to keep continuously keep struggling to achieve goals success is where preparation and opportunity meet success is where preparation and opportunity meet can i call uh, toastmaster mohammad hasan to speak on this topic postmaster mohammad hasan i have put the topic on the chat i think postmaster hasan has not uh... I mean, some connectivity issues. Okay, in that case, can we have Postmaster Hidayatullah to speak on this topic? Success is where preparation and opportunity meet. Unfortunately, there is no opportunity to prepare for this topic. <laughs> you are muted uh, to smasher hidayatullah uh, 
thank you, uh, Dostmaster Sanat Agarwal, for this topic. Success is where preparation and opportunity meet. What is success? Success is something which we get satisfied when we achieve. And to do that, we need to do preparation. We need to plan and prepare to meet the success. So what is opportunity? Opportunity is something which success keep chasing. So we chase the opportunity and we try to meet it and try to achieve it by proper planning. So when the preparation is adequate and when we take appropriate actions to meet that opportunity, it is where when we can say that success and preparation, they meet and it's a win-win situation for us. So how do we go about this? So preparation for success is very essential. Unless you plan accordingly, you, you take you know, appropriate steps uh, and uh, you keep your, uh, uh, your mind focused and in meeting that success and uh, you meet the opportunity, I think uh, that is where you meet the, um, the, your preparation will help you in meeting the opportunity, which will give you a very successful outcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, back to you, uh, Toastmaster Sanat. Thank you, Toastmaster Hidayatullah for that wonderful uh, speech. Uh, The next topic is comfort is the killer of creativity. Comfort is the killer of creativity. I have put the topic also on the chat window. And can I have Toastmaster Soheb Ahsan to speak on this topic? Toastmaster Soheb. Yes, Toastmaster Agawar. Am I audible to the Please. rest of the team? Uh, yes, we can. We can hear you. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, comfort is a killer of creativity. So I'll like to sort of give a practical example, a practical situation which we are facing in our company these days. Um, we have an account stable team who usually are uh, just processing invoices staying within their comfort zone and not thinking out of the box because that's the way that was, that uh, particular profession has been perceived to be. And the people who are working in our accounts table team have been in the, in the role for about 10 years, more than 10 years. So they're right now in their comfort zone. What has happened in that process is, uh, you know, we were hoping or we were expecting that they would have identified issues with respect to the vendors or their balances or uh, their performance. Uh, where we could have played our role um, and this hasn't happened um, unfortunately and there have been a certain uh, couple, maybe more than a couple of cases where you know uh, if in hindsight you know if uh, finance or accounts people in specific would have played their part or would have done their proper due diligence i would say and been a more, bit more creative and, thought, and done some out of the out, out of the box thinking maybe we could have avoided some uh, situations. So for example, we had to, we had overpaid to a customer, to, to a vendor, um, which resulted in a, a receivable from the vendor instead of uh, a payable to the vendor. So this has, this has been there for two or three times at least. Um, and if we had done, and, and what I was trying to emphasize to my team is, you know, think just don't stay in your comfort zone. You have to do, show some paradigm shift in your thinking and move to, uh, a zone where you're outside of your comfort zone, you're thinking outside of the box, thinking for the company, not just for, you know, killing time and processing invoices and going home. Um, so uh, we have identified certain issues that they're talking to those vendors. Hopefully we'll have some success, but I don't know. But also at the same time, we have also been able to avoid uh, a couple of disasters in, uh, on the similar grounds. So, I mean, it's, uh, it, 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 uh, this topic links with the other topics you mentioned previously, you know, success is where preparation opportunity meets. So people had the opportunity, but they were not prepared, for example. 
Um, so we, I'm working with the team to do a paradigm shift in their thinking, which will help us going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Soheb Hassan. Yes, whenever we are, we become comfortable, then mistakes happen. Absolutely. Uh, the next for the next topic and the next topic is i would like to invite uh, toastmaster nandu kotharet for this topic uh, area 6 director nandu kothare are, are you available sir to speak on the topic yes uh, toastmaster nandu you are you you are a man of experience, so we would like to learn from your experience. So can you talk about any paradigm shift that has happened in your life and give share your experience and let us know how you have benefited from it? Your fellow Toastmasters, distinguished Toastmasters, and my dear friends, a warm good morning to you all. Couple of years back, I joined into the badminton club. My main aim was to build my health. But from there, our respected DBD introduced me the Toastmasters and I joined into the Toastmasters club. At that point of time, I was very afraid to go in front of and talk in front of the people. If you call me two years or three years back, I will say, I'm sorry, I cannot talk in front of you. I can talk to you face to face, one by one, but in front of the audience, um, I cannot. When I joined into the Toastmasters, it was a paradigm shift for me. I tried, I am always ready to take or grab the opportunity to speak in front of the people. I moved from the shivering boy and now I can, I have a confidence. I know maybe I'm talking about something wrong or maybe the vocabulary problems or there are other issues, but I have a confidence. I can speak in front of the public. That confidence I gained from the Toastmaster. Dear fellow Toastmasters, take the opportunity, always take the opportunity and grab the opportunity and do yourself. Don't worry about the mistake. The mistake can be rectified in the future. But the one thing is to improve your confidence. How to improve your confidence? to continue practice, practice, practice. With this, I hand over to the Turbul Topic Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Nandu Kothare. Practice, practice, practice. Absolutely, absolutely. Step out of your comfort zone, practice. And before, I mean, I can go on and, you know, to Table Topics is such an interesting uh, session. We can go on and on, but I would like to check with uh, Toastmaster of the day if we can still have, uh, we already have, have had seven topics. If you want me to go ahead with a couple of more topics or you want to end it here. I think uh, we can have one more. We can have one more. Then let us have one more. And uh, can we have our rising star Toastmaster Mudal said to take this. The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. I put it on the chat. Master. Yes, I have seen it. The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. Yes, to a certain extent, I would agree with the statement that hard work delivers you success. And if it, you do not do hard work, success is hard to come by. 
However, a question might arise that we have seen many successful people who apparently have not worked so hard in their life, or we see them in a way that they are not as hardworking as we are. To them, I would respond that this is a clear example of judging the book by the cover. Do not look, do not perceive at what you see. Maybe this person is doing things which you are not looking at. Like if you're improving your communication skills at work, people might be thinking, oh, maybe this guy is, you know, reading some novels or listening to music or watching shows in the night before going to bed. But are they aware of the fact that you are getting up early morning on Saturdays on your weekend and you're sacrificing your sleep and your time in order to improve your skills? Definitely hard work is a stepping stone for success. And it's a short shot and a confirmed antidote, which has been provided by experience over time, that in order to achieve long and foregoing uh, success, which is everlasting, you need to do hard work. You might achieve success by finding shortcuts or by doing things in a very smart manner, uh, avoiding the, the work that is required there, but that would be temporary. Once it is found out that your bases are not that strong, definitely it is going to be uh, causing problems for you in, in any place where, where you might be. So in order to succeed or in order to have that success to go with you hand in hand, you need to do hard work. There are no shortcuts to hard work. Back to your table topic, Master. Don't judge the book by its cover. Very well said, Postmaster Mudar said. Uh, it is just that we don't know. Sometimes we see the person is successful, but we don't know the struggle that has gone behind that success. And we take it for granted that success was, uh, I mean, somebody has got success without doing anything. And as you were making this speak and as you made this point, one example came to my mind. And I mean, I, I, I had seen one series on Netflix regarding either the series or a movie, which is a King's Speech, where the King of you, London, King of Britain, uh, who was giving motivating speeches during the World War II, as he was a leader of the of the of the nation, and how many of us would have known the struggles he would have gone through making those speeches, motivating speeches when the person struggled to make even one statement or two statement without, uh, uh, I mean, he had, he had a speech problem, right? And imagine the kind of struggles he would have had to go through to be able to make those speeches. So yes, if he could do it, we can all do it. With this, I will hand over to Postmaster. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Toastmaster Sanat Kumar, for that vibrant session. And it was really interesting and engaging. And the most important thing that I have uh, noted that all the topics were surrounded with the team. Much appreciated that you engaged all of the members to speak something on our theme of it. So it's an opportunity also for everyone to talk about the theme. Yes, comfort and success do not go together. And just one more thing, I just wanted to, uh, during the meeting, things came to my mind. And uh, I would like to say that many times we perceive success from someone else's point of view. Say that I see a person who is success based on his occupation, based on his affluence, or based on his whatever I see him, I see that he, this person is successful. But on the other hand, the person uh, to the outside world should be a successful person, but for him, maybe he is suffering a lot or he may not be happy at all. You know, earlier in one of the mm -hmm. table, uh, earlier one of the Toastmaster session, we said that happiness. So becoming uh, contented with what we have, appreciating what we have and becoming a happy man. We can say that a happy person is a successful person, right? In, no, not in all the contexts. I mean, we see that, okay, success is not a destination. 
because the moment you achieve certain goals in your life you have other priorities or other goals ahead so you are going again 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 and they're working for it and getting it done definitely hard work is the stepping stone you know there was a portrait i have seen earlier that it is showing an iceberg and people see only the top edge of that iceberg so this is the total uh, outlook of a successful person so what we see that only the edge means the person is successful on the edge all his hard works efforts pains griefs everything is below the sea level nobody sees that right nobody sees all is only people look at the successful person so this is it i mean hard working leaving out of the comfort zone working for what we are trying to achieve and most importantly make sure that everything what we do is making us a happy person thank you again uh, toastmaster sanat and moving on to the i would call it the most important or most important as the prepared speeches our evaluation session if every evaluation se- session is uh, basically an opportunity okay if we don't know what we are doing whether it is right or wrong or what is it, where we can improve where where what was my flaws there is no we cannot improve it because we are every time coming here then giving speeches then we don't know what is happening so i would call it the most important session of this toss mastering i would like to call our uh, distinguished toss master uh, dr sundar for conducting the evaluation session dr sundar okay so yes thank you very much uh, toss master of the day toss master anand pillai for introducing me to this session and also a big thanks for uh, giving a prelude to that how important evaluation and feedback is we all try to assume that comfort and success never go together because that's the theme because it's always hard work and success that always go together and success follows hard work comfort is something you know it's kind of a portion that might actually put you away from hard work and thereby putting across away the success that you would savor in your journey we had a great meeting today and one of the important aspects wherein we overcome comfort and go towards success much towards success is receiving the right feedback at the right time so that's what the general evaluation session is all about and we have a lineup of great evaluators to evaluate the performances today and also meeting leaders and also the general feedback as the general evaluator without further ado let me just move on to the prepared speech evaluations to evaluate the first speech that was delivered by toastmaster mohammad noman which was a level 2 uh, project number 2 uh, about evaluation and feedback mm, it uh, i would like to call upon a very enthusiastic toastmaster a person who joined just a year ago into toastmasters but with his sheer hard work and perseverance has been reaching places in toastmasters he is now within just a year he has actually taken up the ex composition of a leading club in area 6 and he is proving yet again that like with his path completions and his success journey he is indeed so hard working and perseverant let me call upon toastmaster hasan hussain to evaluate the speech of toastmaster mohammad noman was not so under sorry um, we need to see whether all of all the table topic speeches speeches qualified um, for voting yes uh, the, it was checked up and already the voting link has been shared i right. took i am personally and i did it no problem thank you very much for reminding mr toastmaster uh, toastmaster hasan the stage is yours thank you general evaluator good morning once again to all fellow toastmaster please excuse me for my video today good morning to all the fellow toastmaster and greeting to my speaker toastmaster mohammad naman for completing his level 2 project 2 today a great theme a great topic bring in today the make earth a better place that is a need of our he has started with a great quote that what is the diversity is it is the actuality the actually the ability to accept 
respect and celebrate the diversity. It was a wonderful message actually that we need, we all need to understand. This is the need of our, we need to understand how we can get opportunity out of the different culture, different uh, nationalities and uh, different languages, so many, whatever we have diverse in ourselves. He bring in many, many examples and many different countries example, how they, what are the cultural differences in these countries and how they used to communicate in various aspects. He bring in some example of United States and Japanese cultures, how they used to deliver their message using some positive word, even they're angry and how he has bring in the example of Russia where they are very direct to the point. Even if you are wrong, they will say directly that I disagree totally or I agree with you. So you bring in all these very example stating the various culture all across the globe. And furthermore, you bring in the example of your Riyadh Metro where you are working in, a, on a, in an organization with various nationalities and working so fantastically because the mission is same, the objective is very clear. You bring in the example of Google, how the Google used to, uh, used to define or evaluate their people saying only the positive sides and how difficult it was when it reached to the Google fans and they were looking for the negative, but they could not. So you mention all about the cultural difference and what is the positive aspect of it. You end up with a great call of action or quotation you can, you can say that is, remove the cultural glasses and see it with the humanity. It was a great message for the audience that we need to remove our glasses of the differences of opinion, differences of culture, all kinds of diversity, but we shall see the human with the humanity. Your speech was constructed very well. You delivered it the help, with the help of presentation with well confidence and a great use of our body gestures. You were confident while speaking. You were delivering the message with great eye contact to the audience that was giving right interaction to the audience. The things that I would like to suggest to you is like all throughout the speech, you were using the presentation. The number of slides were so many that could lead to distraction to the audience. So I would like to suggest you try to reduce the number of slides and try to speak more from your side that will have more interactive. And adding to that, while coming on the stage, try not to start with opening the slides. Come on the stage, deliver your message, start an opening, then you bring in the slide so that audience can feel your presence on the stage, not like you are hiding behind the slides. So try to avoid these things. And uh, apart from that, the speech was fantastic. It was well-crafted. I enjoyed it a lot. I wish you good luck for the next stage. Over to you, General Valentine. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Hassan, for that brilliant evaluation of Toastmaster Mohammed Noman's speech. I'm pretty sure that Toastmaster Noman has received the most appropriate feedback to improve and take his speech to the next level. As a general evaluator, I had a few points uh, of a few points of observation in Toastmaster Noman's speech. And if Toastmaster Noman would allow me, I would like to suggest to him that he could incorporate a little bit more pauses and gesturing because. When we talk about speaking in public you know, communication, one of the important aspects, even when he, even when in relation to the topic that he spoke about, that is cross-cultural understanding, it is important to know about gesturing. If you see how people in Saudi Arabia speak, there is a lot of hand movement that happens. So when they see someone speaking without any hand movements or without any facial expressions, they see that person as stoic. So this could be incorporated in his future speeches just to try to Im improve the nonverbal communication skills that is gesturing and also a little bit of more pauses would actually add value to the speech. Uh, in addition, uh, I would like to say Toastmaster Norman, you use the word just, either I just, we just or just a lot many times. Try to avoid just in your future speeches. Moving up next, we have the evaluation of Toastmaster Mudasir Farooq's speech, which was done by yet another uh, enthusiastic and energetic Toastmaster. He is the Vice President Education currently of Toast, uh, Taj Toastmasters Club and the Vice President Membership of Garajina Toastmasters Club and also the former CSR Manager of District 79 for the program year 2020-2021 for, for which he won a Leadership Excellence Award recently. 
Uh, I let, let me welcome on stage Toastmaster Jijo Koshi, soon to be DTM Jijo Koshi, uh, to evaluate Toastmaster Modasar's speech. Toastmaster Jijo, the stage is yours. Thank you, DTM Sundar Amalingam. You always motivate me to go further. Your words always take me higher as my mentor. In business as in life, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate, says Chester Karnas. We need to agree. We need to agree that Toastmaster Mudassir Farooq is a great speaker and he showed it through his exemplary actions today. He had a nice thought process going on about negotiation. I'm all the while focused on the subject. We need to agree. The title, in fact. And he gave us all the scenarios about negotiations. There was uh, ample examples and that really got us involved. Especially the example of car. That's a personal story. That was the major content. That really hooked me to the stage. Furthermore, coming to these objectives was to give us the different types of negotiations and the strategies used. So we saw the three scenarios beautifully explained. Win, win, one win, one lose, and lose, lose scenarios. So that really connected us and how we need to be alert while doing a negotiation. So uh, and we need to know when to stop or not go further. When we know that we will not end up in a good situation, we need to end it there. That was a very good thought, which uh, really made us all alert because we miss at times. And then we go on further, maybe into a fight or we lose relationship with that person. So that was a great uh, way. Uh, we uh, the topic was really explained. And by the, all these examples, he met the qualification or the objectives of the speech. Thank you uh, and congratulations, Toastmaster Mudassir Baro, for that. Now, every speech has something for us to learn. And for me, if I were in this place, I would have focused on only two things. That's not too much, very few things. That's the state moment. The stage moment because he just walked the talk. I would have preferred him to stay in a place and explain everything rather than just walking the talk. We were just seeing why I asked why, why he is walking around. So that we could avoid for the next time. And one more thing what I noticed is his hand. He was holding something to his hand which was stopping him from expanding further with his hand. So that are the two recommendations I have. Overall, great speech, great examples. And just these two things, use the stage only when required. The stage is all yours, was Master Mudassir Faru. And back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Jeja Koshi, for that uplifting evaluation. And also those valuable feedback points that you had given for Toastmaster Mudassir's speech. Pretty sure that Toastmaster Mother Sir has grown up a lot as a great communicator and a speaker in front of the public. And I'm sure that he's going to take up those valuable chips that you have given to him to take him further. Uh, just one point that I would like to add as well as the general evaluator for Toastmaster Mother Sir's speech is like he could chip in with a little bit of humor. Uh, this is something which we always miss when we speak in public. We are always so strict that we think we should be serious enough. But life is all about enjoying those lighter side moments. You sold a car. There would have definitely been a lot of lighter moments that you would have enjoyed and you would love to share with us. Please do incorporate these kind of humor elements or lighter elements whenever you deliver your future speeches. Moving up next, we have the evaluation for the table topics. We had a lineup of great table topics, eight table topic speeches. So to evaluate the table topic speeches, it is none other than yours truly. And just a word of note to our timer, since we had eight table topic speakers, we'll have an extended time for the evaluation. 
So the green signal would be at four minutes, the yellow would be at four minutes, 30 seconds, and the red would be at five minutes. And if the table topics evaluator, that is me, if I cross five minutes and 30 seconds, then assume me as disqualified. So I'll now start with the table topics evaluation. Good, good morning once again, and thank you very much to our table topics master, Toastmaster Sanat Agrawal for bringing out great topics. As usual, I have seen you for the third time as a table topics master, and you always align your topics in line with the theme and the word of the day so that every member is knowing and realizing the theme and also using the word of the day. Thank you very much and kudos to you for that one. And thanks to all the speakers, you did a marvelous job. Just a point of general recommendation for all speakers, except the two experienced speakers who were there with us, Toastmaster Jiju and Toastmaster Nando. Please ignore this. This is mainly for the newcomer speakers here with us. Table topic speech, although it is just two minutes, it is like a normal prepared speech. You have to have a good opening, a good body, and a conclusion, and you have to try to incorporate all elements of a public speech. That includes your verbal communication and a nonverbal communication. What I noticed is all the members lacked or slightly were at the lower end of the nonverbal communication skills. You can use gestures, use your stage, use your hands, Use your voice, use your facial expressions, anything can be done. All of these add value to the message that you are trying to deliver through your table topic speech. I'm pretty sure that all of the newcomer speech, the speakers with Mecca KSA Club are going to do this in the future. Remember, nonverbal communication comprises 70% of the entire message that you wish to deliver. 30% only is the value added by the verbal communication. So this is what is like the salt or the makeup that you give for a, a beautiful car or a beautiful dish that you would like to do. Now going to the individual evaluations, we saw Toastmaster Jijo talking about a paradigm shift in his perspective. He was talking about mask wearing, a very good topic, a very good message that he got up because this is something that we have all been discussing since yesterday evening when the government announced that from tomorrow, we would not be required to wear masks outdoors. This is the way you catch the audience attention by bringing in something that's current a great way to take up the speech and also connecting it to, to how we need to improve ourselves in our life. That is wonderful Toastmaster Jijo. Just a word of note to you because you're a senior speaker, I'm pretty sure, but if you had added humor, we would all enjoy your speech even more. Next was Toastmaster Rupesh Kumar. Change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. A great topic, a very well uh, delivered speech, all the day-to-day -day scenarios that we see in our life, be it work, home or personal. It was actually an elucidated by uh, Toastmaster Rupesh Kumar, the pros and cons of it. Uh, something that I would like to incorporate, uh, would appreciate if Toastmaster Rupesh can incorporate is like the voice modulation and gesturing and any one particular personal example that made you look at things. For example, uh, something your child did, a work of art. Okay, so when you looked at it, you, you had a totally different perspective of how you look at what people do, what children do. So these kind of personal examples add value to the message. So this is my recommendation for you, Toastmaster Topesh. Next, it was Mr. Baskar, who was talking about success is a journey and not a destination. Very well started. He started off how we all define success at every point in our life. This happens to all of us. At school, it's the exam. At work, it's a promotion. After marriage, it's the children or a good family, a happy family, and a little bit of wealth. So this is what we do, but is this the final destination? Actually, it's the journey. So this is what we failed to realize and it was wonderfully started. He started off very well, but he was not able to continue it further. Mr. Baskar, I know that probably this is your first time you're attempting a table topic. All that you have to do is like continue to give out your opinion. So this is what uh, the recommendation that I would like to give to you. And I'm pretty sure you will be a great table topic speaker sometime in the future. Next, it was a Toastmaster Hakmi. He was talking about growth and comfort never coexist. He was also talking about general life examples, similar to Toastmaster Rupesh. A, a, an individual personal example, Toastmaster Hashmi would have added greater value. And also I would like to reiterate that you have to focus on your voice modulation and also gesturing. This will add definite value to your speech. We had Toastmaster Hidayatullah Be uh, Beg speaking as the fifth table topic speaker. He was giving us a topic about success is where preparation and opportunity meet. He very well defined the topic. He gave us a clear idea. 
But as a recommendation, Toastmaster Dayatullah Beg, always try to bring in at least one personal example. It could be your own life example, or it could be an anecdote from somebody whom you saw or some great leader. So if you give an example of where preparation and opportunity met, I'm pretty sure you are an accomplished leader in your professional life. So you would have definitely have at least one or two examples to share with us that will definitely create the punch that we all need. Then next it was Toastmaster Saeb Ashan. Uh, comfort is the killer of creativity. He started off very well because he right away jumped into the example of how professionally uh, his accounting team was not trying to be creative because they were all within the comfort zone of doing the same monotonous thing. So this is, and he also wonderfully reiterated the fact that creativity is not just for your current workplace, but it is for the overall good of the community. And also it helps out all of us in the future. A great way to take the speech but if you had a little been a little bit been more emphatic in describing and detailing your personal example, uh, which could have been done with the non-verbal communication, as I mentioned earlier, the voice variety and gesturing, uh, it would have been great, Toastmaster Sai uh, Next, we had Toastmaster Nandu Kotrat. He was talking about paradigm shift in your experience. A wonderful speech started off with him joining the badminton club, then how he got a chance to become a Toastmaster and how he came overcame stage fright and how he delivered a two minute inspirational speech with a call for action. So this is what we look for in a table topic speech. So you have to deliver the message, you have to have the impact, you have to have the attention grabbing feature. So Toastmaster Nandu's was like a kind of a wholesome package. I don't have any recommendations to state for that one. Finally, our last table topic speaker was Toastmaster Mudassir. Uh, the only place where success comes before work is the dictionary. Yeah, it's, it's a well-known topic. And uh, the, the, the interesting thing which Toastmaster Mudassir did was like he, so he took us into an alternate perspective because very often we see successful people, but we don't see them. Are they really performing hard work? There he introduced the metaphor, don't judge a book by its cover. So this is how you can actually bring an interest in your speech by adding certain rhetorical devices. Like say, you know, you, you take the audience to a different angle and then you drop in a metaphor saying that, no, this is not the way, what the question asks is the right way of doing it. Great speech, uh, Toastmaster Madhasar. Uh, in fact, among all the other six speakers whom I had seen from Mecca KSA, you had a much better voice variety and hand gesturing. Uh, if I were to add uh, something more to your speech, it would be like a call for action. You saw Toastmaster Nandu saying that uh, you have to, uh, you know, persevere and you have to be passionate about it. Don't be afraid. You may make mistakes, but you can always rectify it. So, so this kind of push message should always be there at the closing so that you are able to inspire and make sure that your message is driven home to the audience. On the whole, it was a great table topic session. Uh, due to lack of time, I was not able to give out uh, the, mo the major uh, key aspects of each speaker's speech, but I mainly wanted to focus on the recommendations because we are all focusing on growing and because success is a journey as we heard from our table topic master. Thank you very much and back to the general evaluator. So with that, we come to the end of the evaluation of our prepared speeches and table topic speeches. Uh, Mr. Timer, uh, are all the evaluators qualified? Toastmaster Hassan and Toastmaster Jiju qualified. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Norman. Uh, so I'll now share the link for the best evaluator. Please vote for the best evaluator. So the link is there in the chat box. Kindly vote for the best evaluator. As the voting progresses, it is now time for us to hear from our meeting leaders. We did not have an R counter, uh, but in general, I could see that the amount of filler words that we all use as speakers was pretty low. Uh, that is indeed a commendable effort by most of us. The only thing that I noticed was uh, a few of the speakers used um, uh, during the table topic session. Prepared speech was immaculate. There was no uh, none of these filler words. There were a few repeated words, but if we are able to script our speech, if we write down our script and practice it, pretty sure that we would be able to remove those repeated words. In, in otherwise, I would like to recommend our uh, VP education to make sure that we have someone to take up the account role at every meeting. Once in a while, if someone is missing, it's fine. But uh, I see that like two or three meetings, we have been missing the accounters role. So let us have someone so that we are able to speak 
without any of these filler words much more fluently and eloquently. So next up, we have our wordmaster and grammarian. Toastmaster Hidayatullah Beg did the job of wordmaster and grammarian. Uh, Toastmaster Hidayatullah, could you please share your report? Uh, thank you, uh, DTM Dr. Sundar. Um, I note that uh, a lot of uh, the speakers today use the uh, word of the day. Uh, Toastmaster Mudassar used it at least four times. Uh, Dr. Sundar yourself used twice, uh, DTM, uh, Toastmaster Anand Pillai twice, uh, Sanat Agarwal uh, thrice, uh, DTM uh, Jiju Koshi once, uh, Rupesh uh, twice, Shoye Bakhtar and DTM Nandu uh, once. Uh, coming to the uh, uh, grammarian uh, uh, grammatical uses, uh, one speaker uh, used improper uh, use of a word called word which was uh, incidents instead of incidents he used he uh, uh, used it as indices and there was also improper use of the word uh, uh, the uh, and in one place uh, he mentioned they spoke uh, instead of it should be or should have been no they speak because it's a it's present one uh, similarly uh, he used the word google belief it should have been Google believes. Uh, and also there was a word, uh, move, to move to the France. It should have been move to France. Another speaker used the glad to hear uh, uh, that news. It should have been glad to hear, hear the news. And another speaker used, I have a confidence. It should have been, I have confidence. And uh, the um, uh, thought or word or saying which I liked was uh, from uh, DTM Nandu, uh, in which he advised practice, practice, and practice. It's a very good advice for all of us. And I hope you know, we will uh, follow that advice. Uh, thank you. Back to you, uh, uh, DTM Dr. Sundar. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Dayatullah, for that uh, detailed uh, word master and grammarians report. It was indeed beneficial for all of us and I'm very happy that we all use the word of the day and that signifies how easy and simple a word it is and how remarkable that word is like we all like a paradigm shift in whatever that we do we all aim for it and when we have such a word we are able to incorporate it in whatever speech we are doing thank you very much for that next we have our timer Toastmaster Mohammed Noman could you please share the timers report Yes, yeah. We have two speakers. First speaker was Master Muhammad Noman. He completed his speech in seven minutes, 29 seconds. And second speaker was Master Mudassar Farooq. His speech time was seven minutes, 25 seconds. Now, if we discuss about the table topic, for table topic, we have eight speakers today. The first speaker, Toastmaster Jiju, he took Two minutes 18 seconds if we talk about the toastmasters rupesh timing he's completed his speech in two minutes 20 seconds our third speaker toastmaster baskar his timing for the speech is one minute 55 seconds our fourth speaker toastmaster mateen hashmi his speech time was one minute 15 seconds now, our next speaker toastmaster hadayatullah the speech is, was completed in one minute 50 seconds the next man is Toastmaster Sohaib Hassan. His speech timing was two minutes, 20 seconds. And next speaker, Toastmaster Nandu, he's completed his speech in two minutes, 10 seconds. Now, if I would talk about the last speaker, Toastmaster Mudassar Farooq for the table topics today, his speech timing was two minutes, 12 seconds. Now, if we just move to the evaluation session, we have three evaluations. The first one is from Toastmaster Hassan Hussain. Hassan Hussain has completed his speech in three minutes and 25 seconds. Our second speech evaluator for the prepared speech is Toastmaster Jiju. Toastmaster Jiju speech timing is three minutes, 20 seconds. And the evaluation for the table topic session was done by the Toastmaster's Dr. Sun, Toast, distinguished Toastmaster, Dr. Sundar. He completed his evaluation in seven minutes, 42 seconds. Over to you, general evaluator. Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Norman, for that detailed and the visually informative report. Uh, 
Uh, with that, we come to the end of the meeting leaders report, and I would now request you all to vote for the best meeting leader. The link has been shared in the chat box. As the voting progresses for the best meeting leader, uh, we, I'll now go on to my general evaluation report. We started almost a minute delayed, the 7.36, but I think that is acceptable considering the fact that uh, we were there by nine, uh, sorry, 9.30, 9.36 we started. We were all there by 9.30 and then a couple of the meeting leaders were delayed to join. One minute is fine, but still we are keeping up the time. The presiding officer uh, took up the role and uh, he actually introduced the guests and also announced the winners. And the TMOD also chipped in with announcing accomplishments of members. That's actually a great way to encourage our members uh, in a general manner. Uh, we, As I mentioned earlier, we had missed up one role player, the R counter. We would like to fill up all the role players. The TMOD, in his, while introducing the meeting leaders, he uh, failed to introduce the role of the vote counter because that is one thing which also is a part of the meeting leader team. Although we are not voting for it, uh, but since it is a part and parcel of the meeting leader team that is helping the TMOD to continue the meeting proceedings, it has to be included as well. Uh, the education session, the table topic session and the evaluation session have been progressing in the right fashion and all the leaders have been doing it in a good way. Uh, one thing that I would like to add upon is uh, the TMOD, when he is adding a feedback based on the prepared speaker speech, it should be limited to less than like 10 to 20 seconds. It should not be a long feedback because the feedback is mainly focused by the evaluators. Just a word of encouragement or just a word of calling for applause, that could be done. Uh, and in between, uh, the TMOD could actually elaborate on the theme because the main focus of the TMOD's preparation for the session is going to be based on the theme of the day. So he could actually add anecdotes, personal examples, um, case studies also, because today I saw that both of the, uh, you know, one of the speakers, he was giving a case study about Google. So I, I know that you're all like business professional, finance professional. So you all have the habit of dealing with case studies. So you can bring in those kind of examples as well during the TMOD session. So it has to be focused primarily on the theme. Other than that, the meeting was flawless. We had a great meeting. We had 13 participants and that is indeed great for us. And all of us sacrificing our time on a weekend morning and joining for a better cause. And that is the end of my general evaluation report for today's meeting. And with that, I conclude general evaluation session and hand back the lectern to our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Anand Pillai. Toastmaster Anand Pillai, the stage is yours. Thank you, DTM Sridhar, for that wonderful evaluation. So we have touched upon all the aspects of the speeches, the table topics, everything. And also, I really got a wonderful feedback on my first time TMOD role. So I will definitely take care of it in the next meetings. Thank you for that. And um, I hope um, the session from my side is over. I would like to hand over the lecture back to the presiding officer, Crossmaster Mudasir Farooq. Thank you, Toastmaster Anand Pillai, for that energetic session that we had. And it did not look like that this was the first time. You are doing the TMOD role. Wish you all the success for the future. Now, uh, before we go further, uh, I would like to ask our vote counter if he can, if he can provide us the link to vote for the big three. Uh, please vote for the best uh, meeting leaders. I think it's done for the big three. It's a minute. So please do vote for the big three. The link has been provided in the chat box. Overall, the meeting was nicely conducted and uh, before we announce the winners i would like to ask for a guest uh, if we have them the area b director toastmaster nandu if you're available can you just please give us a feedback of how was the meeting was conducted and what are the points you could improve on thank you very much uh, for giving the opportunity once again good, uh, good morning to you all Indeed, it was a great uh, meeting. All the experts are covered. I know uh, one of the things that you have a great mentor like DTM Sundar Ramalingam and the great leaders like DTM Sridhar. So they are very experienced. I can see the impact on the club meeting. So first, 
as you remember two uh, two uh, months before i joined there are a lot of improvement happen in your meetings now it's like uh, i i cannot say this is a new club i can see a, a experienced club so it's well and focus on more uh, more you know to the results and do your speeches and i request all to uh, you know contact all the members because 20, 40 members uh, club only one uh, one thing i would like to recommend is that uh, we need to improve this uh, you know strength in the meeting apart from everything is perfect excellent i'm very happy to you know uh, to see the today's and nothing to say more thank you very much over to you the presenting officer thank you toss master nandu for those enlightening words yes definitely our mentors are really the reason for uh, this club has achieved the success it has and uh, a round of applause for them thank you very much dtm sundar and dtm sirida uh, we wish uh, a quick recovery to our president sirida hopefully he will be feeling well and he will join us in the coming meeting uh, he was sick let us wish him well uh, if the winners uh, report is ready and our toss master sundar can we have the name of the winners please yes toss master mudar sir uh, i'll now share the list of winners for today's meeting okay so the best speaker was toss master mohammad noman please give a big round of applause please unmute yourself and give an applause for all the winners toastmaster mohammad duman was the best speaker the best table topic speaker was our area director toastmaster nandu the best evaluator was our energetic evaluator toastmaster jijo koshi the best meeting leader was toastmaster hidayatullah beg our word master and grammarian for today and the best of big 3 was our toastmaster today toastmaster anand pillai congratulations to all the winners back to you presiding officer thank you dtm dr sundar congratulations everyone keep up the good work and definitely the sky is the limit you just need to focus on how to improve yourself and help this club grow with yourself today we have a new guest uh, he is not a guest uh, we have soheb ahsan with us i believe he is our member uh, So, Basen, can you just uh, give us a few thoughts on how you found the meeting, and would you be joining us in the future as well? Yeah, I've been. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to that sir. Uh, I've been part every now and then of uh, the meetings. Uh, just done my first speech, uh, maybe more than a couple of weeks back. Um, just due to the uh, my ongoing work commitments, I'm unable to. give more time to this uh, you are inspiration obviously because i think we started around the same time and mashallah you have achieved a lot and i'll keep you as you and toastmaster mohammad noman as one of the role models um, i'm in touch with mohammad noman and toastmaster sridhar he was also uh, pushing me the reason i'm here is because of toastmaster noman and toastmaster sridhar um, and sometimes you need this uh, sort of uh, push you know to uh, uh, to get you out of your comfort zone even though i have an intention but putting those intention in that intention into action is where i would credit to smart sridhar and to smart mohammad noman and i look forward to uh, having more sessions with you guys in the future perfect thank you very much uh, we will definitely be looking forward to you to join us on a regular basis and give your projects so you can be on the top with all of us uh that's it from my side i believe we can conclude our session for today uh, thank you everyone for your time for joining us today and see you next time thank you thank, thank you. you thank you thank you all thank you, all. Thank you.